It's the Hot 97 Morning Show. We are here with uh, a legend, I would say. Whoa, you're going to give him legend status? Two Super whoa, Bowl whoa, rings. Whoa, whoa, Calm down. Calm down. Let the man, let the man speak. You know what I mean? Turn. 11 uh, years pro. Went out after a championship. Two Super Bowls. And now look at their offensive line. That's right. Giants. Uh, right tackle. Kareem McKenzie is G-G. here. What's going on, buddy? How you guys doing? I mean, we're happy to be in your presence, man. I've never met anybody with two Super Bowl rings. Okay. Well, you know, Rosenberg claims he has three, but... Rosenberg... My organization. My now flailing, like, just floundering organization. His organization. He he actually has some input in what they do. And you can tell by his lackluster appearance, his inability to keep his life together, that that is why that's his organization, because they stink. Wow. Hey, bam, 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 bam. But we should... We, <laughs> might I point out, those, those colors are... These colors hideous. don't run. These they're, colors they're, don't they're, run. They're hideous, but they're not even the right colors, I don't believe. No, our colors are a little uglier than this, if you're being honest. Wow. About. Okay. Anyways, hey, let's talk about something positive. Okay. Tell us about what you're doing with the Ronald McDonald House. Well, the Ronald McDonald House Charities African American Future Achiever Scholarship is that time of year again. I like to it. To go ahead and to get your applications online, www.rmhcnytristate.org. The deadline is January 21st. 2014. Yes, folks, that means you have a little over a month, but don't wait, don't delay. Go online, get it right now. And you, but you have to do something. Like you have to, uh, I'm sure there's a requirement, some sort of. Well, the, the one requirement that we have is that one of your parents has to be of either African American or Black Caribbean descent. Mm, and I hate well, to point out, made it. I, barely I barely made it. made it, but I hate to point out that being on time and being black or from Caribbean descent don't always go hand in hand, which is why we're giving you like six weeks to figure this out. Let's go ahead and call it five, just so we don't give them too much time. We, we, we really need you to go ahead and get get online, get these applications and fill them out because an incomplete application will not be considered. And mind you now, this past year alone, RMHC has handed out over $600,000 in scholarship money. So there's a lot of bread there, uh, boys and girls. Get you a scholarship, a four-year scholarship, and I heard they follow you through the, every step of your college. Every step of your collegiate career through the four years we follow you, which, is, which separates us from the other scholarships that you may have. Some scholarships may get you know, the freshman or sophomore year. We follow you through four years. Over the past nine years, we've helped over 130 students get their degrees. We follow them through their collegiate career. And we've had a 98% graduation rate. I like it. Ronald McDonald House Charity. So that's rmhc.org slash you got to be black to get this. <laughs> In so many words, but the, the, the right, the right the, to make sure you get it right now, not, not what Ebro said, but now www.rmhc nytristate.org. Or if you want to call in, it's 1-877-771-7772. So do you want to talk about your failing Giants? My gi- my Giants never fail. Your oh, good point. His Giants won fail. Super Bowls. That's a good yes. point. The yes, current we did. Giants, it seems like they could use you on that offensive line again. It seems like they could, but I'm kind of I'm kind of in a graduate program right now, trying to get another degree so I can actually get a job, a real AKA, job. AKA, I'm too busy for y'all. Right now, yes, <laughs> very much so. So if someone was to say. Can you, Kareem, can you please come back and save the Giants? Your direct response would actually be the, the phrase, ain't nobody got time for that. It wouldn't be anybody got time for that, but even if you paid me a million dollars a game and I only had to work on Sunday, I'd still tell you no. Really? Yes. That's a big statement. Seriously. If you were to evaluate the Giants and their problems right now, what would you point to? What would be the one or two things that are going on with the Giants that need to be fixed? Well, I, I would say the, the main thing – overall would be injuries, which, I mean, you really can't prevent. You can only, to a certain extent, uh, you know, be patient with the guys that are out there that are actually hurt because, you know, being being on the football field, formerly myself, I know how it is every Sunday to go out there and to play week in and week out. And injuries is something that it just happens. Your body wears down. There's nothing you can do about it. So the guys that you have coming in behind you, that level of, you know, camaraderie, so to speak, or knowing your teammate as well as you should and who's doing what isn't there. So be patient and understand that, you know, there are down years for every organization. I mean, and then there's up years for the Giants. Right. And then there's down years for the entire organization all the time, like the Redskins. Well, okay, you, you can use that one. I, 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 I'll bite, yes. Because they're possible. in a consistent ebb, I would say, not much of a flow. 
Okay. Is the ebb the good part of the ebb and flow? I think it, ebb is the bad the and the flow oh, is the good. the bad. Yeah, we're, then we're think, ebbing terrible. Ebbing <laughs> <laughs> terrible. That, that's a new one. I, but, you know, I, I like the way you're thinking, though. I mean, at, least, at least you're owning up to the shortcomings of your team. Well, the top of our – I do not have a lot of faith in our owner, and unfortunately organizations that are led by an inept leader struggle. Inept? Yikes. Strong word. Strong. Uh, I'm I'm very unhappy with what Dan, I, I listen. You know what? I thought things were looking better for Snyder when he hired Shanahan, and then it seemed like he sort of usurped all of his power now, and it's kind of rendered him an ineffective dud as a head coach. But and that when, when you me. say you usurped his power, how, how do you do that one? Um, I believe he did that by uh, befriending our quarterback in such a way that wouldn't allow for the coach to feel like he controlled the entire team. Basically, he let RG3 drive his expensive luxury cars in RG3's rookie year, at which point now RG3 feels like he can do no wrong. So now when you hear RG3 talk about the team or the mistakes going on, he never takes responsibility for any of it. He puts it off on everyone and Shanahan, else. Oh, and there's another thing. I, I think Shanahan didn't want to start RG3 this year. I think if he had his choice, he would have rested him for another month and started Kirk Cousins. But when RG3 made the statement, I want to come back, I'm going to start the season, my deal with Adidas says I'm going to start the season, it's fine that RG3 said that. He's an eager guy. Right. But I don't feel that Coach Shanahan anymore had the power to say, no, you will not. And I think that's a problem. So you think that Shanahan is just a figurehead? He's just there just to say he's... No, they wanted him to call the games. They wanted him to call games. They respected his advice with regard to personnel. Okay. But I don't think that he could make decisions anymore. And um, not to say I think Shanahan was perfect, because he wasn't. But um, I that's just where I'm at today. When you're this bad, it could change week to week. That's my current diagnosis. You don't know what it's like. You're on a part of a good team. You wouldn't understand. I mean, it could change from week to week. I, I don't think it can get any better from this point forward. It has to get better. I mean, there's what, four weeks left? Oh, this season's not getting better. Of course. It's the pretty future. much over. The future, though. So you're looking ahead. That's, I'm looking at Alfred off. Morris, Jordan Reed, Robert Griffin the third. I see some real talents on the offense side of the ball for the Redskins. Okay. I think we could be a good team. but so I mean, you'll definitely get some decent draft picks. No, we won't. We traded all those for our quarterback. Oh, so what is this future you speak so of? So let's talk about the Ronald McDonald House <laughs> charity. <laughs> There's a chance, I don't know if you've peeped this, Ebro, that um, Victor Cruz could be on his way to being the greatest Giants wide receiver of all time. That if you look at the start of his career statistically I mean, where if he, he is, keeps up the pace. I mean, Amani Toomer, I mean, it was but his pace right now, should he now that we're past where we're past the point of looking for it to see if it's a fluke. This is now 3 years of being good even when the team's bad. Victor's been good. Um do you do you see him as potentially going down as one of the all-time greats of that position? You know, it you know, as Ebro just stated, you know, I mean, you got to look at the career as a whole, and hopefully he stays healthy, and they can go ahead and get him the ball, and he can have more productive seasons going along with his career, and anything's possible. The guy's pretty good. Um, before we before we get up off the Giants, I, I heard you said it twice that you haven't really been able to watch football. What are right. you doing on Sunday? Right now on Sundays, most of my day is consumed with my graduate program, in which I'm now getting my master's in professional counseling with a specialization in mental health. Mental health for the hood. We love talk mental about health. it all the time. We love mental health. Cause no, and the reason it comes up often is because you know, as you know, black men is machismo so tough they think they don't need to go speak to somebody about things that have happened to them. So sometimes we talk about mental health for the hood. Our very own Cypher Sounds not here right now. He goes to a therapist and he swears by. It. Definitely. I mean, it's one of the things that you need. I mean, my personal feeling is that to be successful in today's world, to deal with the world as a whole and the chaos of it, you need to be able to talk to somebody and get things off your chest and have a different perspective on whatever you may be going through. So in that notion, two things. One, um, are you just not watching on Sunday because you can't deal with how horrible the Giants look? I'm, man, I'm so consumed with work right now. I mean, to, the program that I'm in at William Patterson University over here in Wayne, New Jersey, I'm a full-time student, meaning I'm taking nine credits. You can, they will not allow you to have a job to take that program because it's that intensive to really be focused on learning what you need to know about helping people, psychology, theoretical concepts, treatment uh, protocols, suicide assessments. It's a lot of work. And to really be focused and really to do a good job, 
you need to be able to focus on the work at hand. So, and on that, you being an offensive lineman, how, um, what's your perception of the Richie Incognito? What's the other guy, Jonathan, Jonathan Martin. Martin? Did you, do you have any, I mean, you played in, you've been in those locker rooms. How many years did you play football? Played 11 years. 11 years in the locker room, offensive lineman. I'm sure you guys did some hazing and talking shit. And, you know, t- you know, when you're lined up across from those linemen, crazy things get said. All the time. From those defensive linemen. I'm sure you guys talk crazy to each other to motivate each other in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Do you have an opinion on how this transpired? Really, uh, I think it would be unfair to offer an opinion because I really don't know the chemistry of that locker room and really the dynamic of how that team is made up because, I mean, you can look at it from the perspective of, well, it's crazy to think that something like that would happen in a locker room given what we've seen from the media's perspective. But at the same time, we don't know what type of relationship those two players had with one another or just the type of chaos they had in that offensive line room. Because, I mean, like you said, it can be some crazy stuff said on the field, off the field, whatever the case may be. Because, I mean, you got to remember, I played against guys like Junior Seau, uh, Bill Romanowski. I mean, you had Bill some Bill Romanowski crazy, talked crazy to people. Some crazy stuff on the field. And, I mean, you just said, like, did he really just say that? Like, I, No, and I mean, like, and if we get into the specifics of it, People, you calling each other nigga or, you know, all type of female anatomy. You pussy, you bitch, your mom this, your wife that. Like, I mean, it gets crazy. Well, I mean, from that perspective, I mean, to use the N-word, I don't care what race you, I, mean, I don't care if you were raised by an all-black family in an all-black neighborhood. Using that word, there's no pass on that in any perspective. So would you ever hear it on the field, though? Of course. you still hear it. You would still hear you it. You would still hear it on the field. I mean, anybody, anything to get somebody out of the mindset of focusing on football you say the craziest thing. I mean, I've heard guys talk about wives, girlfriends, mothers, whatever the case may be. And I, we we had this debate because I uh, felt that Jonathan Martin uh, was soft mm-hmm. and what he did was not um, something that I could agree with. Now, right. I'm not in his shoes, and like you said, I'm not in that locker room. But um, I do know that in those, even here, at the, I mean, even here at the radio station, we're not in any kind of physical environment. With anything, and rappers talk crazy to me. People on the street talk crazy to me. Right. Like to fold up and quit because of words, just to me, isn't enough. But now the thing is, here's the question that you have to ask, and this is my, you know, my counselor had on. Did he actually quit because of he, it was just too much for him, or did he go reach out to somebody and they deny him that help? We don't know that because he could have very well reached out to the head coach, somebody else within that organization, and it fell on deaf ears. And he felt the only way to go ahead and to bring that to attention, his issue was to go ahead and to walk away and say, well, why have I walked away? Because I've seen reports where it said, he's not the one who brought this to the NFL's attention. So where did it come from? And when you think about it, Richie Incognito reportedly has over 1,100 text messages from his teammate. I don't have 1,100 text messages or 1,100 friends to actually have that many text messages in my phone in the first place. So, I mean, just, just the dynamic of what we're seeing and what's being reported can be altogether different than what actually happened. Very good points. I mean, very good points. But he went to Stanford. I think his parents are like attorneys or so something. So what? He's trying to get a check, B. You think he's trying to get a check? I think he's trying. I think I think I heard them say that they were trying to toughen Jonathan Martin up. Mm-hmm. And so they were riding him. They were, you know, uh, uh, talking crazy to him to try to get him to respond in a way that was aggressive. They probably went about it the wrong way because that's not how you motivate everybody. Exactly. Okay? Now... Um, in the state of Florida, I read a report where if you uh, like hostile work environment is a, like what you uh, uh, claim is happening with you. Reportedly, you have to pay someone three times their salary if they can prove that it was a hostile work environment. OK, but just to your initial point, he's just trying to get a check. Well, isn't everybody in the NFL trying to get a check? Right, but I just don't agree about going about it. That well, you think way. you think that he didn't want to play football, but he wanted to get a check. Yes, that's what you think. And he didn't. And and, and I think it was complicated by the things you pointed out, right? Career, which is he didn't have a place to turn to. He felt ostracized, mm-hmm. and you know him being the smart individual that he is, Stanford educated, was like, you know what? I'm not going to go about this a physical route and start fighting in the locker room and start fighting with my uh, uh, coworkers. I'm gonna go ahead and do this the legal way and get paid. Mm-hmm. Probably counseled by his parents. That That is a possibility, but, I mean, it also could be a possibility that at the same time, you have to think of it from this perspective. If you see someone struggling, whether it be here at High 97 or wherever the case may be, any other workplace, and someone reaches out to you, 
Don't you in some way, shape, or form help them? No, despite I, what they're I mean, I've been in that situation several times here. I do, but right. I don't know what they did. But right. I, and even here where I dealt with something with a coworker, quitting isn't the answer. But like I said, we don't know what happened because I know just from my experience in the NFL, the player development department has an individual there that attends to the needs of a player. Mm -hmm. So if he has any issues, I mean, because basically when you have a young player coming in from the college ranks, you want to make sure that they're successful. So you go ahead and you give them all the help that you can to make sure that off the field is taken care of, they can focus on football. So the question is, what did that player development director do? Because, I mean, that's one of the things that the NFL does a great job of going ahead and making sure that people know we take care of our players. We have programs that help them with whether it be drunk driving, family issues, substance abuse, whatever the case may be. We have programs to help our players. So how was it that this, this situation transpired where someone felt as though they had to quit? Granted, you have a point. Maybe he wants to go the route of, you know, getting paid three times his salary, but in the end of it, in the, in the grand scheme of things, how productive or successful do you think he will be in future pursuits? Because basically you're saying right now, using that avenue to get a paycheck, his he's NFL done. career is over. He's done. I think he's done either way. I don't think anybody wants that type of person on their team that would fold up like that, especially, look, NFL's combat to me. You go out there every day with guys and you hope they got your back. Crazy stuff happens, as we just talked about. Right. And if you're somebody that folded up under pressure during the season – during the season, mm -hmm. who wants you on their squad when you go into combat? Well, listen, I'm rooting for a team that's currently completely folded up, the entire, every single player and the coach. So <laughs> The Redskins. Yeah. But um, you make some interesting points. The both Kareem McKenzie, listen, sir, I appreciate you coming by. It sounds like you're going to go work for the NFL doing some counseling. Is that the move? If they'll have me. If they'll Why have wouldn't me. they? Well, it's one of the things where, you know, you can go ahead and, I mean, basically counseling as a whole – Help is for people who want it, not people who need it, you know, and it has to be a bona fide need where they recognize and understand that the player is the commodity that they need to protect. And a lot of the issues that, you know, we see that are being exacerbated by the NFL and being involved in sports we need to pay more attention to because at the end of the day, you have to realize that no matter what happens, this guy has issues just like anybody else. I mean, you talk about the Redskins and what's going on down there. I mean, who knows any number of issues that may be going on in someone's life off the field that's preventing them from being successful on the field? Because you can't tell me that you can go ahead and just turn that switch off and say, okay, I'm at work, forget about everything else. We're carnal human beings, it doesn't work like that. Yep. You know, so when I graduate and I have my doctorate degree, hopefully there's a place for me. If not, I'll go where I'm needed. Two-time Super Bowl champ Kareem McKenzie's his name. Ronald, Ronald McDonald House Charities, the website for you young people who want to go get uh, some money. Get paid, son. Get that college scholarship hooked up. All you mm -hmm. have to do is uh, prove that one of your parents is uh, black or from the West or black from the West Indies. I ain't said West Indies since Christopher Columbus was around. <laughs> Who says that? <laughs> Thanks, Graham. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.